Hey, what's happening, guys? One of the downsides or benefits to being a musician, however you look at it, is you tend to acquire a great deal of gear over the years. Some of it you use every day. Some of it you bought because you saw somebody else used it and you wanted one because you were attempting to recreate a sound or, or you've heard they were good or whatever. But uh, one of the things you're going to see a lot of our microphones everybody ends up with a collection of microphones myself included from dynamic microphones like the Shure SM57 FM58 to condenser microphones like Newman's and stuff well, I don't have any Newman's and uh, if you've watched a lot of YouTube videos especially live type videos you end up seeing a lot of people with a microphone like this one this is a condenser microphone I'll pull off this little windscreen, and if you look, let's see if we can get some, shed some light on the subject. There you go. You can actually see the capsule. I'll try this. There you go. You can see the capsule within the microphone. So, an idea. Now, this is, like I said, this is a condenser microphone. There's, I would say there are two major types. Somebody's going to argue with me, but wait till we get to the end. I'd say there's two major types of microphones. There is a condenser microphone like this one. Hang on a moment. And a dynamic mic like this one. Remember, we looked at the capsule in there. Well, this also has a capsule. All mics have capsules, basically. You see the difference in this one? It's, and it is not just this on end, okay? So, the condenser microphone, this is a dynamic, by the way, the condenser microphone has that little metal plate up there. Well, we're, we're going to tear one of these down so you can see better. But anyway, the plate vibrates against the back plate, and that vibration creates the voltage that is then amplified and whatnot through your 48 volts fan and power and stuff. With the dynamic microphone, there is also a plate and there's a coil in here, not unlike a speaker coil, that vibrates. From what I have been taught, and I could be very wrong, a condenser microphone is the most accurate reproduction of the sound that it hears. The dynamic microphone is not as accurate but is more sturdy. You know, these are safer to bang around on stage. These are somewhat more delicate. The reason that I'm saying a condenser is a more accurate representation of sound, whereas the dynamic is more sturdy, is the dynamic microphone has to move that entire coil inside that capsule and generate its magnetic field that way, which gives it a slower transient response than this thing, which just simply has to vibrate a small metal plate. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, I said, somebody would probably argue when I said there were two main types. Say I'm forgetting the ribbon microphone. I would argue the ribbon microphone is a dynamic microphone in another shape. But, you know, if I'm wrong, you can correct me down below. So anyway, what I was saying is that you know, if you watch a lot of videos, you'll see guys that have these in a shock mount and stuff. I thought we would take a look inside and have a look at the entire one. I have over here, this one this is just a cheap one, cheap USB condenser microphone. The nuts all already been removed from the bottom of it. So you can see the two main parts, the capsule and what we'll call the amplifier. So I remove the two nuts or two screws out of there and then we can bring the capsule out. See, so you can see the makeup of the dynamic mic. We have a, a skeleton here, a frame to which everything is solidly mounted. In the top, we have our condenser capsule, which you can see is kind of shock mounted in there with some foam. And on the bottom, we have this board. So let's take a closer look at the board. Let 
What can we see? So I'm reading this at the same time as you. This is a Delta Echo Romeo Attack 192 USB mic. Yeah, they've obliterated any any chance of figuring out what that is. It, this is probably the USB chip because this is a, uh, a USB type microphone. And that is probably the amplifier. But you can tell this is a, a board for many purposes. As we have room for D minus D plus diode. A couple more capacitors there. But anyway, like I said, everything is securely mounted here. And then everything else that you see is basically just an, an outer cover here oops it just you know it kind of goes on like so now let's look at a different one so here's the first one put back together now let's take a look at this one just because it has some signal processing built in so the first thing we have to do is remove the bottom nut and then we're going to have to take these knobs off as well Hmm. Hmm. How to best get the knobs off. I have many tools I could use to do this, but I think in this case, just a cheapy pair of pliers is going to be the best way. Yep. Just yank them right off. stuck on there we go okay so you can see this is an entirely different board oh yeah look at that okay so on the first side of this board let's zoom in so i can read it xiaoyin.vip yeah. xmax audio So there's our two potentiometers, one for echo, one for gain. And again, we see two distinct ICs. This one looks like it might not have been obliterated. Yeah, you can almost read that. Can you guys see what that says? I really can't read it. Maybe uh, upside down. Twenty two nine six eight. I don't know. I'll have to look at it in the computer later. I'm trying to figure out what those ICs are, but that's what I wanted to show you. There's a lot going on inside these that I think add to their reputation as having a superior sound. But I am no audio engineer, so don't take my word for it. I know that guys like that will have multiple of, maybe put, I don't know, this on first. Yeah, sound engineers will have multiple of the same microphone because each one is just slightly different than the last one and they know you know they'll have them they'll have you know like painters tape labels on the back of them which ones they are and they'll know you know number one is a little bit hotter than number four and you know this one produces the mid-tones better yeah sound engineering is, is crazy so that's the inside of a dynamic i mean a condenser mic let's uh have a look inside a dynamic microphone. So we have the coil. And glued together. Hmm. 
there shouldn't be anything except you know the coil goes to the switch which you know breaks either the positive or the ground and that goes out to the uh, XLR connector on the bottom really that's, that is uh should be all that's in here if I can get it open yeah that's a long screw yep there we go no circuit board in here output wires go to there one of them's broke and they simply come out the bottom so now you know a little bit about the two different kinds of microphones the condenser and the dynamic the condenser has less mass to vibrate which makes it a more accurate representation of the sound but it also is a delicate microphone and it requires generally 48 volts of phantom power dynamic microphone has to move a thicker coil so it's not quite an act as an accurate representation of the sound but it's fine for most things the the number one you know vocal mic you've ever seen on stage is the short sm58 which is simply a dynamic microphone so it always does the job it's sturdier it's heavier just a little bit slower and when i say a little bit slower we're talking you know we're talking down there in the nanoseconds it's not something you're going to notice but maybe a trained audio engineer would notice some people have very very specific wants in their sound anyway that's all i got for you today i hope you enjoyed it if you did give me a thumbs up Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.